They say in Texas, they do things bigger. The Austin Acoustic landed the LFL's biggest free agent signing, quarterback Michelle Angel. Angel makes her debut tonight. Nothing like a strong woman that takes what you want. That's powerful. We make history when you step on that football field. Now's the time to release that anger, that pain on them. Do you believe in miracles? They don't deserve no mercy. Them get put down or they get laid down. The most successful people in life have failed. We have failed. Everything we've ever asked for is right in front of us right now. So let's get it. Welcome inside the broadcast booth of LFL Football Night. As always, Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco joining us down on the sidelines a little bit later, Miss Heidi Golznig. Now, Bobby, this schedule came out back in January. When it did, we saw the game of the year, the Austin Acoustic hosting the Chicago Bliss, a Legends Cup rematch, mind you, in this very same arena. That was a game, if you guys look back, folks, Austin was really a couple plays away from winning that game. That's how close it was. That was back in September of 2018. Fast forward to May of 19, a lot has changed. These two teams are not the same. Two completely different teams for Austin. They go out and they sign the most coveted quarterback, the top free agent, Michelle Angel. And then they get rid of it. I talked to Mike Oliveira, their head coach. There was some problems and headaches in that locker room. Leilani Lopez, she's gone. Steph McCormick's out and Michelle Marshall. Three top players aren't with Austin this year. Very dramatic changes to that roster for Austin. We'll see how that plays out this season. On the other side of the ball, we've talked about the changes with the Chicago Bliss. They overhauled their entire coaching staff, pretty much their entire roster. The two that were remaining, Tamika Robinson and Kristen Morrison, are out, at least Morrison, for the remainder of the season. This is a roster that needs to be coached up. They have a lot of athletic ability and talent. They just need to be coached up, and I don't think they're ready for prime time just yet. You're right, anytime you lose your head coach of nine years and the majority of your top veteran players, with the exception of Kristen Morrison, you mentioned it, she's not playing tonight. Not good news for Chicago. The biggest problem though has been quarterback. They haven't had a franchise quarterback since rock star Heather Furr was there. Tamika Robinson was a starter in the opener. She's a great athlete, great wide receiver. She's not playing tonight. Bring in Sharquela Baker. It's up to her to lead Chicago tonight. Sharquela Baker, say that three times, Bobby Huka. I love that name, Sharquela. <laughs> Tamika Robinson is out, so yet we've got another shakeup in the quarterback ranks for the Chicago Bliss. For the Austin Acoustic, that was their offseason story, the big signing of Michelle Angel. You could say it was a marriage made in football heaven with Mike Oliveira, arguably the best offensive mind in the LFL, and now he has a true franchise quarterback in Michelle Angel. Our own Heidi Golznik sat down with Michelle Angel and talked about her signing with Austin and what that's meant to her and this roster. Thank you, Mitch. There have certainly been a lot of great head coach quarterback pairings in football, like Bill Walsh and Joe Montana, or Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. In the LFL, outside of Seattle's Chris Michelson and KK Matheny, perhaps the most high profile pairing is Austin's head coach, Michael Vera. As you said, a great offensive mind, teaming up with arguably the best quarterback in the LFL, Michelle Angel. I sat down with both to talk about Angel signing this offseason, as well as how it's impacted the team. Michelle, you've really come on in recent years, some regarding you as the best quarterback in the LFL, but you've been a bit of a journey woman, starting with the Dallas Desire then Seattle Mist, and now the Austin Acoustic. How has the environment and preparation been like here in Austin as opposed to other teams you've played for? Well, um, for starters, I think LA was left off that list, but I did play a couple seasons there. Um, but this really does feel like home for me. It actually reminds me of my Dallas season. Um, we had a very successful season here, and I think it was a mixture of key veteran players along with a couple rookies sprinkled in. Um, we just had that nice level of experience to kind of bring a balance. Um, so it's it's an intense locker room. Um, it's a locker room with a lot of potential and everyone's just ready to get together and put it on the field. So what has the experience been like working with Coach Olvera? He seems to be so passionate about the game. This is, you can probably see it on my face. Um, this is the first time in a long time in this league, um, I think I've been in here six years now, that I have been truly inspired. Um, the first conversation that I had with him on the phone probably lasted an hour and a half was strictly about offense and what we could do, and it just opened up my mind um, and really got me so amped to play. 
Um, so he's just a great guy and a great football mind. And um, it's, it's been an awesome relationship working with him. I think we really feed off of each other and, and love what we bring to the table. Um, he kind of gives me some room to, to do my own thing and then pulls me back in when it's a little too much. So it's a, it's a great working relationship and I'm just stoked to be able to have someone that could challenge me in this way. These two have clearly developed chemistry. Olvera feels that he has a quick quarterback that can win a championship here in Austin. Back to you guys. Thanks, Heidi. The Austin Acoustic fans are certainly thrilled about seeing Michelle Angel in the burnt orange. Let's lace them up. The first half is next. Back to LFL football night. One of my favorite cities, Austin, Texas. Site of the big game, we've got the Austin Acoustic hosting the Chicago Bliss. And our first look at Michelle Angel in the burnt orange. Michelle Angel, one of the elite quarterbacks in the LFL. She had a great season last year. 16 touchdown passes, only four interceptions. And how about that 96.9 QBR? Any offensive coordinator would love to have that. And that's Angel looking down the field. Rightly going to Cassandra Bills. Let's meet this Austin offense. Nicole Peterson, your center. Misty Gonzalez, tight end. Jerrica Green, tight end. Cassandra Bills, wide receiver. To Shay Winfrey, wide receiver. Ferrari Harris, the running back. Michelle Angel, quarterback. The big story for Austin is right there. Number 13, Chris Dell, the Ferrari Harris in action, one of the greatest runners ever. And that is Christelle Harris, still on her feet, all the way down to the Chicago 15-yard line. A 20-yard run by the Ferrari. What a trap block by Jerrica Green on Veronica Smith. That opened it up for the Ferrari. Then the rest was on her own with three broken tackles, a cutback. She has not skipped a beat in her first play with the Austin team. Wow. So coming out of the gate, Austin tested through the air. That doesn't work out. Then go to the GOAT, Christelle the Ferrari Harris, who rips off a 20-yard run. That'll set up a first and 10 inside the 15 of Chicago from the shotgun. A little jet sweep. That's Cassandra Bills. Great open field tackle on Bills by Veronica Smith. Bills, one of the fastest receivers in the league, was no match for Deanna Hightower. She couldn't get the edge. Bills went right around her for a big gain. That Bills eight yard run setting up a second and two. All down to the Chicago seven yard line. You're starting to see some of the weapons available to Mike Oliveira. That's a poor snap back to Angel. Angel has to eat it and now Tori Giles talking to Angel a bit. After the sack, Giles smacked her on the back of the head. A cheap shot by Giles. That is a quarterback that plays like a middle linebacker. Watch the shot by Giles to the head of Michelle Angel. And Angel's not going to back down from anybody in this league. Not a smart move by Giles. You don't want to wake up the sleeping bear. Michelle Angel, one of the most competitive players in the league, started out pretty slow so far tonight. He might be wide awake right now. Yeah, only one pass attempt by Michelle Angel to this point. That was a go pattern to Cassandra Bills, not able to connect. They've really kept it on the ground here and effectively moved the ball. Michelle Angel told us that's the difference this year with this Austin team. You have the Ferrari in the backfield. When she starts out slow, you can always give it to the Ferrari. And that is a toss right to Christel Harris. We do have a flag. This should be, at least early indication, this should be on Chicago. And there's the numbers on Christelle Harris with the Atlanta Steam last season. Despite the uniform, she performs. What? Meanwhile, we've got that flag on the field. No, it's not a first down. Yeah, it was right, it was right there. They put spotted down there. That's the spot. It's going to be fourth down, or you can replay third down. Hey, you spotted it down there, That's right? That's head referee Jason Gardner. We have an illegal defense. Right here, right? So it's going to be a five-yard penalty. Right, so you can go to the 10 and replay third down, or you can take the results of the play, which is two yards further, and it's fourth down. Give me the fourth down. So you want to decline? Mike Oliveira getting the option of the penalty or the yards. Here's the call. Illegal defense on Chicago. The penalty is declined. Fourth down, Austin. Wow, I'm not sure I would have declined that penalty. It would have been third and five with two downs to go. 
now you get the seven yard gain from the Ferrari, but it's fourth and three. You have to get a first down right now. And I don't know that I wouldn't have Christelle Harris in the game right now. Instead, here's a fourth and three into the end zone, overshooting her target. That was intended for Tashay Winfrey, a questionable call on fourth and three. For what? Defensive. I, I'm not looking way down there. We'll talk, though. Hey, hey, I came after her because she done put my head in the ground after her. Okay. Angel is still upset by the hit by Tori Giles to the back of her head two plays ago. And like you said, though, that fourth down play selection, I'm not real sure about it. They tried to fade in the end zone, wasn't even close. You got the Ferrari you can get three yards with. Yeah, I think you're just looking for a more high percentage play if you're Mike Oliveira. Why not try a screen? Certainly Christelle Harris in the backfield. Not a shot into the end zone on a fourth and three to, of all people, to Shea Winfrey. Not a proven receiver. Meanwhile, Chicago's now out on the field. That is Chad Duzon. We were expecting Shaquela Baker. So now we've got the third string quarterback in the game. And a penalty early. This should be delay a delay game, game on Chicago. Chicago. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. That's the problem when you don't have a starting quarterback. Tamika Robinson, they knew she was not going to play tonight. You have to get your backups ready to go. Already the first play of the game, they have a penalty. You've got to be careful here if you're Chicago, backed up inside your own three-yard line. And a pair of bookends like Brittany and Courtney Dowdy getting after it. So a first and 15 now. Dusan remains under center, fakes the handoff, and barely gets it off down the field. A good arm on Dusan. Now a second and 15. Kat Dusan struggling with this offense. You could see her looking at the play card. Let's meet Chicago starters. Kate Mustin, center. D Hightower. Tight end. Tori Giles, tight end. Ty Ali, wide receiver. Jocelyn Gray, wide receiver. JaVale Thompson, running back. Tamika Robinson, quarterback. With the uncertainty at quarterback, this game's going to be on the shoulders of running back JaVale Thompson. So a second and 15, kind of an ugly looking handoff. And that ball is loose. We've got kind of a rugby scrum. Chicago may have recovered it. You gotta get, you gotta get off me, Chris! Now you got Megan Hansen and Chad Duzon going after one another. So this Chicago offense looking ugly early. The tight ends, Tori Giles and Deanna Hightower ran into each other. It was a Y underneath trap play. They both thought they're getting the football and ran right into each other. That's Chicago offensive coordinator, Dedrick DeWalt, and he cannot be happy with this start. They should put a tent over this circus so far. The offense not coordinated, all out of sync. They don't know their assignment. Just a bad start for Chicago. We've all heard about the greatest show on turf. Chicago's offense is the complete opposite of that. And there we go again. We've got another delay a game on Chicago. Unbelievable. Delay game. Chicago, half the distance to the goal, still third down. Unbelievable. A team cannot start off colder than this team. Nobody knows their assignment. Look at their eyes. Nobody knows what they're doing. The good news for Chicago, that's only a one-yard penalty, half the distance. So it'll be third and 17, and now Chicago wants a timeout. That's the best idea this offense has had. Let's call a timeout, and we're going to also take a break. Early in the first quarter, Chris Dell, the Ferrari Harris in Austin, started out strong but fizzled at the goal line. Back after this. Back to LFL football night. Before we get underway, let's go to the Chicago Bliss huddle. I thought I had it right. I called a play. You, got, you didn't look to me because I'm sitting right okay, here. Okay, y'all. Next. We got to talk about that later. Wow, Chicago's got 99 problems, but Javelle Thompson is the one trying to put some discipline, even with her coaching staff. Tell them to talk about that later. Don't argue right now. We're here to play football. So now a third and 17 for an inept offense. Ball at the one yard line. An empty back set, and that looked like Chicago was clearly offsides. That's number 20. 
Emmer Vander Hayden. False start. Number 20, Chicago. Half the distance to the goal. Still third down. I'm sorry, in my 10 years in the LFL, I have not seen such an unorganized first quarter by any team ever. Yeah, you, you kind of get the sense that not a lot of work goes in at practice, the way they've come out tonight. And certainly it doesn't help when you're on your third string quarterback. So again, now a third and 18. This is Chad Dusan gonna do it herself. Best looking play for this offense, a nine yard carry for Dusan. Jazz Dusan, it's a good athlete, as you can see. She can run the football, she's just not a quarterback, or should I say not coached up as a quarterback. Right now, Dedrick DeWalt is not doing his job as an offensive coordinator. His team doesn't know what to do. That wasn't a design play right there. She just took the ball and ran a sweep. It looks like Chicago is now lining up to punt the ball. That is their designated punter, Emma Vander Hayden. And once again, they're getting down on the play clock, down to 10 seconds. Pure confusion on the side of Chicago. And they're not gonna get it off again. This is a disaster, simply a disaster. You gotta blame the Delay head coach. Game. Chicago, five yard penalty, still fourth down. Yeah, I'm not sure how much work goes in here when you've got a team that's ill-prepared like this. They don't even know their assignments. They don't know where they're supposed to line up. This is as bad a football as I've seen in a long time. I've never seen anything like it. Sid Lewis, it starts at the top. You have to have your team ready to play. Come in here and compete, know your assignments. Fourth and 13, a good looking punt. But it's gone all downhill for Chicago as that hits the board. As per LFL rules, that should be down at the point it made contact with the ground. So Mike Oliveira and this Austin offense will take over at the 17 of Chicago. In fact, our own Heidi Golznick met with Mike Oliveira to talk about the Michelle Angel signing. Coach, you've had the same quarterback in Tisha Winfrey during your tenure here in Austin. Now, enter Michelle Angel. What do you feel Angel brings to this offense and locker room that perhaps you were missing with Winfrey? Tisha is, Tisha is a great leader and was our, a great quarterback for us and, and, and you know, Michelle Angel comes in, what she brings to the table is a lot of experience. So her expertise, her experience, and able to operate in the pocket, move faster, think fast. She does that a little bit differently than Touche does. It's simply a great situation for Coach Oliveira in Austin. You have the league MVP, Michelle Angel, as a starter. You have a gunslinger, Touche Winfrey, behind Angel. If, if Angel gets nicked up, you got a girl that can play football coming in the game. Yeah, what an insurance blanket to Shea Winfrey is with all of her experience under center in the LFL. Now a second and five after that Harris run over the middle. That is intercepted. Now fumbled. That ball is still loose. It looks like Chicago may have recovered. I'm not sure who Michelle Angel was throwing to there. Ill-advised throw again by Angel. Nobody's open. I actually think she's trying to pull it back and it goes out there. Vander Heiden, there's nothing to do but catch the football. She comes in and gets the ball stripped from her by Bills coming out of nowhere. A great recovery there by Smith, keeping the football in Chicago's hands. And look at Deanna Hightower tearing at the back of Michelle Angel. Angel having a really rough start. Cold start as a quarterback, but she's taking some cheap shots from Chicago. Early in the game, Tori Giles banged her in the back of the head, and then Hightower almost ripped her head off right there. So after that tough start by this Chicago offense, they get second life at the 12-yard line after that Emma Vander Hayden interception. This is Dusan handing the rock to their ace. That's Javille Thompson. Finally, some positive yardage for this offense. And now even Thompson slow to get up. Let's meet Austin's starting defense. Brittany Dowdy, your defensive end. Courtney Dowdy, your defensive end. Megan Hansen, linebacker. Cassandra Bills, safety. Chris Daniels, safety. Mandy Pena, corner. Marisa Goldstein, lockdown corner. That defense is led by the bookends, some of the premier defensive ends in the league, the Dowdy sisters, Brittany and Courtney. Here we go, a second and five, an ugly handoff. But a much better open field tackle by Marissa Goldston. 
That'll be a loss of a couple yards. Usan totally confused in the backfield, didn't know who to hand the ball off to. He's still confused. Arginizak got the ball, and Goldston made a great play. Yeah, Goldston is turning into quite the cover corner, and on that play, showing off her tackling abilities. A fourth and three now, make it a third and seven. Delayed handoff to Javille Thompson. Thompson's the only one getting positive yardage. A four-yard carry setting up a fourth and three. If I'm the offensive coordinator, DeWalt, that's who I'm handing the football off. That's your star in the backfield. One of the only veterans left. Give her the football. Yeah, you're going to have to here. You clearly do not have a passing game. And even to run game, nobody's getting positive yardage outside of Thompson. Defense. Well, the Defense. ball now at the 19 of Chicago. Usan still looking over that play card as she's walking up to the line of scrimmage. Keeping it herself and getting slammed. Brittany Dowdy. You talked about it. The book ends for Austin or something special. Kaz Dusan is a big quarterback. It looks like right there she might be getting the first down. But gnarly defensive end. Dowdy comes up, takes her out. Austin's ball. Yeah, that Chicago offense is simply lambs out for slaughter right now, especially with the size up front for that Austin defense. Here's Michelle Angel, her second time on the field, throwing that ill-advised interception to Vander Hayden on the first series. They're going to go back to Harris, and Harris cutting back in. A 10-yard carry by the Ferrari will set up a first and goal for Austin inside the eight. Harris taking huge dashes out of that Austin defense. She hasn't skipped a beat. Watch how quick she gets to the second level. She takes the handoff from Angel, then boom, one cut back, and she's in the secondary. She's averaging like 10 yards a carry tonight. Unbelievable performance. Interesting that she's going up against her former team. You got to think that's a little more motivation for Harris. This is Bills on the jet sweep. Touchdown, Austin. What about the speed on Bills to get to the outside and then have the patience to let her block develop and cut inside? Michelle Angel, she told us about this when she's off, and she's off so far tonight with weapons like Bills and Harris in the backfield. Bills at a receiver coming on a jet sweep. They couldn't even come close to stopping that. Great run by Bills. Yeah, forget the blocks developing. I take that back on the replay. That was 100% Cassandra Bills. So we may be down to the end of the That's first the quarter. The first quarter. Hold on, hold on. But we're going to go we'll ahead and get a playoff, the extra point conversion. That's exactly what Jason Gardner is saying. So we'll stay here for the extra point conversion, and that'll be the end of the first quarter. That was simply speed versus non-speed right there. Hightower and Giles for Chicago. There's no way they could catch up to Bills. So here's the two-point attempt. Rolling right angel, throwing to the end zone. And that is also intercepted by Vander Hayden. Point after touchdown is no good. This is the end of the first quarter. Michelle Angel has been under serious heat through one quarter. It's the Austin Acoustic up. Six to nothing. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Red zone stuff, we gotta come back to inside face. When we have the field, and we run, maybe we're gonna launch it. We need to throw the damn ball. I am not happy with this production. I am not happy, okay? We're gonna fix this shit, okay? Back to LFL football night. That was a listen-in with head coach Mike Oliveira of the Austin Acoustic despite the score. He's saying basically he's not happy with the offensive production of the first quarter. Not at all. As bad as Chicago's played on offense, they're only down six points right now. Unbelievable. So now we've got another quarterback in the game for Chicago. That's Sharquela Baker, who initially was penciled in as the starter. Second down, Chicago. Baker's a better quarterback than Dusan, more natural. But she knows she has to get the football to Thompson. Thompson last game, he only averaged 2.6, but that's the only real offensive weapon Chicago has. 
Yeah, alongside Thompson, it was Tamika Robinson, who's out of the lineup tonight. That was the only offense Chicago had in that season opener. And it appears that same movie is playing out again here tonight. Second and eight, ball at the Chicago 17. That's Baker from shotgun. Looks very uneasy in the pocket. Now going to keep it herself and get destroyed. A carry of four yards tackled by Megan Hansen and Brittany Dowdy. Baker is raw as a quarterback. She's really young, 24 years old, from New Smyrna, Florida. She played in a pro football league in Florida, but she doesn't even know the system that well in Chicago when it showed on that first run. Now a third and four. Baker going to keep it herself again. Does get the edge this time. Showing a little moxie, running over to Sandra Bills. That'll be a seven-yard carry and stop the presses. Chicago gets a first down. First down, Baker's got a little enthusiasm going on in the huddle. Looks like a little spark to her step right now. Chicago's first first down in a long time. Maybe this is what they need, Baker at quarterback. Baker does seem far more athletic than Chaz Dusan. A good blend between Tamika Robinson and Dusan. At some point though, however, Coach Dewalt has got to throw the football. They have zero completions on the night so far. Arquela Baker, kind of a lanky quarterback. Now a first and 10 at the 22 of Austin from under center. That's Thompson in the backfield. Dropping back is Baker. A slant pattern. That was intended for Ty Alley falling incomplete. And the first pass attempt of Baker's LFL career. She stood tough in the pocket. Defensive coordinator Cole Berry, he brought the heat full blitz. And Brittany Dowdy laid her out, but she delivered a strike. Now he dropped the football. And you could see Baker running to the sideline after every play. That's going to take a lot of energy and time off the clock. She does not know the system. You saw the previous play in the backfield. Javel Thompson helped her out on what to do. So now a second and 10. Ball remains at the Austin 22. That's going to be another delay a game on Chicago. Delay a game. Chicago, five-yard penalty, still second down. He did not Kid Lewis has to have his team more not. prepared for the next game. This team, even though they're rookie quarterbacks, you have to know the game plan, you have to know how to get the plays off in time and just 14, play decent football. 14. So that'll back him up another five yards, setting up a second and 15 at the Chicago 23. Just when they were gaining some momentum, another delay a game. An empty back set this time. Baker back to pass. Another keeper. You can see she's not able to get the edge on this defense. Brittany and Courtney Dowdy are just far too athletic for that. And there's more laundry on the field from the officials right now. Another penalty, but you're right, the Dowdy sitters all over. Personal foul, face mask on Austin. It's a 10-yard penalty and an automatic first down. So they're going to call a face mask here on Brittany Dowdy. We'll get another look at it. And there it is, inside the mask of Baker. And that'll give this Chicago offense new life. That's what they need. Baker's brought some spark to this offense. The offense is still so basic. There was no backs in the backfield. He took a snap and just tried to outrun everybody around the corner with no scheme at all. Yeah, this is Sandlot football that we're seeing real here from the Chicago offense. There's no complexity to it. There's no scheme. Almost everybody's unaware of their assignment. They're looking at their play cards every play. I've never seen anything like this. Javel Thompson, the running back, is calling the offensive plays for the quarterback. That's a first as well. Second and five from the 17-yard line. Baker under center. Going to give it to Thompson right into the waiting arms of Courtney Dowdy. Wow, something new, disrupting the backfield. The Dowdy sisters all over Chicago tonight. This is so sad seeing a Chicago team like this. We're used to seeing franchise quarterbacks leading back. We talked about Heather Furr. Tonight, this is a disaster on offense. Look at the numbers on Courtney Dowdy in all fantasy season in 2018. Her and her sister, check out these stats, Bobby Huco. 5'11", 172 pounds of muscle. Unbelievable players, probably two of the best we've seen as sisters in the LFL ever. Third and eight, crossing pattern. 
And I'm not sure if that ball hit the ground. They're gonna call they're gonna call that a catch. I thought that may have hit the ground. We'll get another look at this. Deflected there in the air. And there's the ball resting on the leg of Ty Allen. You saw the nose Maya hit, might have hit the ground there. I think she had it between her legs. It definitely bounced through a couple players. Ty Alley, a great athlete, kept it between her knees. And it looked like a completion to me. The first one of the night for Chicago. We'll see if Austin challenges this. You can see Chicago rushing to the line of scrimmage. And that may that be the call. The Let's see. Challenge a complete pass. Yeah. That ball touched the ground. Austin is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed pass. I think that's a good a challenge right here. We'll get another look at it from the truck. He's you got it. The nose of the football, that angle you couldn't see, but you could see it here. The nose of the football hits the ground. She did not have control. She had it between her knees when she rolled over. I think she got her hand under the ball. That is a quick call. Here's Jason Gardner. After review, the ruling on the field has changed. The pass was incomplete. Therefore, it is Chicago's ball from the 17-yard line, third down. So the call is overturned. They saw what we saw with that one angle with the nose of the football hitting the ground. But that'll set up a fourth and eight at the Austin 20. Make it the 17. That's a quick pass into the flat, the first completion. That's good to Giles for 12 yards. We haven't seen that yet. Not very pretty, but very effective. She got rid of the football as first soon as she got it. Got it to Giles, who turned it up for 12 and a first down. Chicago's moving the football. Let's go down to the field for an injury report with Heidi. Thanks, guys. Just spoke with LFL Medical Director Rachel Martin, and it appears stand-in quarterback for Chicago, Chaz Dusen, has suffered a lower body injury and will not be returning to the game. Back to you guys. Another injury for Chicago. You cannot help the club in the tub. They already lost their number one player, Kristen Morrison. Now Dusan is out. Wow. So now, in effect, you have no quarterbacks remaining in your stable outside of Baker, and hopefully Robinson returns next game. We are being told the only reason she's not on the field is for personal reasons and couldn't attend this game. Let's be straightforward about it. Tamika Robinson's a great athlete, but she is not a quarterback. They have to find a quarterback. Chicago's known for quarterbacks. They got to go out and get one. Chicago's known for quarterbacks? Three of them won championships. With great defenses and incredible run games. Certainly not with the pass game. I would throw. debate that. They could all throw. All three Second of them. Second in goal. Agree to disagree highly. From the nine yard line into the end zone. Nearly caught and intercepted. Marissa Goldston showing both coverage and tackling skills in the first half. Baker with a gutsy throw again, getting hammered by the Dowdies. That ball actually hits Murdoch in the hands. She should have caught that for six, but no, she dropped it. A great opportunity lost for Chicago. Baker, I got to tell you, she's impressing me a little more, actually a lot more than Chaz Dusan. Chad Dusan could not create anything and was clueless about the offense. Baker just came into the system, doesn't know the system, but she's making plays happen. Now a second and goal, make it a third and goal. <laughs> right on cue. Bobby Huco teeing up Sharquela Baker as she throws an interception to Cassandra Bills. Well, let me, let me rephrase that. She's exciting. Something's going to happen exciting every play. She throws this right to Bills. Perfect pass of Bills with receiver. And with Bills at speed, I'm surprised she didn't take that coast to coast. Wow, what a play by Bills. Cassandra Bills, one of the better free safeties in the LFL, has an absolute nose for the football. We've seen it on the offensive side of the ball, and they're on defense. Just a ball hawk. Ball hawk all over the field, but Baker with an ill-advised pass. Nobody was even near Bills, threw it right to her. First and 10, this is Angel rolling right under pressure. Just lobs it into coverage. And that's intercepted again by Emma Vander Hayden. And Vander Hayden all the way down to the two yard line. This is exactly what Chicago needed. Boom goes the dynamite. I cannot believe the game that Michelle Angel's playing. 
I have never seen her play this bad ever. There's Come a penalty on, on the previous play. Are you serious? Offsides. Come on. On the man. defense. That's some bullshit, bro. It's a five yard penalty. Defense, defense. Replay first down. Hey, y'all ain't fucking tell us shit. You ain't you just telling me now. Y'all ain't talking. I'm just saying. I'm talking about the dead and wet. No fucking. Uh, that's head coach Sidney Lewis not happy with the offsides. That'll negate the Angel interception. That's a big break for Austin. Michelle Angel, she is not even close to her receivers tonight. I don't know what she's thinking. It's a huge break getting the ball back. Yeah, I believe the call was on Veronica Smith, not lining up three yards off the ball. Nonetheless, a first and 10 for Austin, rolling right again under pressure. So that's something they saw on film, I guess, because they are bringing the heat after number seven. Smart throw by Angel, nothing there. They brought the heat. They're bringing heat on her all night long, but she's getting picked off before that. Now she threw that away, smart play. If I'm Mike Oliveira, I may want to consider some max protection here for Angel, as that defense is bringing four defenders every play, and here we go again. Angel throwing off her back foot. She doesn't look very comfortable in the pocket right now. Angel's rattled right now. Frankly, they are getting to her head. We've never seen Angel throw a football like this. And that will take us to the two-minute warning in a very physical game here in Austin. The acoustic lead it, six to nothing. Welcome back to LFL football night. Now let's go down to that Austin sideline. We need to get it first. Let's go. Let's go. Give me the sweep. Give me the sweep. Give me the running back. OK. Spread right. Let's go with the flip team. Try OK? We need to get it first. We are in no huddle, so we got to move, OK? Michael Oliveira trying to get his team to hurry up. He looked a little bit confused right there. He cannot be happy with this team's first half. We expected this would be offensive everything with a passing game and running game. And all we're seeing so far is Ferrari Harris. Third and 10, ball at the Austin 17. Another jet sweep to Bills. And Bills picking her way through the defense. A 14-yard carry. She's really been the spark for this offense. Bills and Ferrari Harris, both them together. The running game's what's getting them on the board and get, keeping them in the lead. So now a third and 10 at the Austin 17. Angel is clearly struggling here in the first half. But as you said, Christelle Harris and Cassandra Bills really bailing out this offense. First and 10, going to Bills to the five yard line and overshooting her. And that's LaPrintia Murdoch. Did that ball ever go out of bounds? No, they're gonna call that a Chicago touchdown. Unbelievable. Boom goes the dynamite for Chicago. That play looked like it was dead. It bounced off the wall trying to hit Bills on a back shoulder, goes off the wall. He grabs it midair, takes it back. Where's Austin trying to tackle her? Unbelievable. How about the awareness of Murdoch? To see that was still a live ball when everybody else stopped. The whole arena stopped. I even stopped. I didn't see it bounce up like that. Touchdown Chicago, this defense doing it. The previous play is under review. So now we're inside at two minutes, so this will be a booth review. We'll get another look at this from the truck. Did it ever go out of bounds? Keep in mind, the wall is live. You can play the ball off the wall. He tries the back shoulder. Bills is there, a little bit overthrown. He tips it, goes into the wall, bounces straight up. Murdoch sees it. Nobody reacts from Austin, and she goes into the end zone. Crazy play. Yeah, I've never seen everybody just freeze and have one player be actually tuned into what's happening. Head coach Mike Oliveira has got to be going nuts right now. Chicago's offense has done literally nothing the entire game, and Austin's losing the football game. A 47-yard return to the house, and here's the official call. After review, the ruling on the field stands as called. Touchdown, Chicago. The PAT will be run as an untimed down. The hometown crowd here in Austin not liking it, but that is the rule. You can play the ball off the top of the wall, and that's exactly what happened. This has to be one of the nuttiest games we've seen in recent memory. Austin's supposed to blow Chicago out. Chicago's offense has done zero, I mean really zero, and they tied the football game up six to six. 
This is the two-point attempt. That's Javil Thompson. Kind of a scrum all the way to the end zone. And that's going to be good, believe it or not, as poorly as Chicago has played in this game. They are up 8-6. to six. Unbelievable. 8-6, to six, and this offense has done nothing, literally nothing, the entire first half. Defensively, Murdoch comes up with a play of the game. They've picked Angel off numerous times. You got to hand it to that D. Javil Thompson is really the cornerstone for this rebuild. We don't know, Tamika Robinson, what those personal reasons were for them missing this game. Will she be back? And we know Kristen Morrison will not be back the remainder of this season. If I was the Chicago coaching staff, I might leave Baker in a quarterback. You move Robinson where she plays great, a wide receiver. You got Thompson as a back. Maybe you got a spark that way. First and 10, Angel rolling back and throwing across her body. She's throwing some footballs that are very uncharacteristic of Michelle Angel. Very silently, Vander Hayden's having a wonderful first half for Chicago. Offensively, punting the football. Interception-wise, she's all over the football field. So that pass was intended for Christelle Harris. Falling incomplete, setting up a second and 10. Angel back to pass down the field. Great touch and dropped. That was the best pass of the night we've seen Angel throw and out of the hands of Bills. Trying a rail shot down the outside. Perfect pass. That's where you want it. Outside shoulder on a streak pattern. Bills has to catch that football. Great pass. That's the old Michelle Angel. So now two incomplete passes in a row. That'll set up a third and 10. Ball at the 15 yard line. Still a minute 32. Austin does have both timeouts remaining. Another jet sweep to Bills. Bills cutting back inside and getting out of bounds. That'll stop the clock at 124, so plenty of time for this Austin offense. At some point, you would think, hey, Coach Sid Lewis for Chicago would make an adjustment. Every time Bills comes in motion, they're running that sweep, that jet sweep, and they're making no adjustment. They're taking big gashes out every time. All at the Chicago 24. They fake the sweep now, wide open. Well set up play. That was complete to Misty Gonzalez, the free agent signee, and good for 12 yards. Looks like Michelle Angel has a little rhythm going right now. Like you said, great play. They fake the inside sweep, the jet sweep, the Bills, throw it outside wide open. That looks like the Austin offense we're expecting. Yeah, you could see a little more confidence with Michelle Angel right now. First and 10 at the 12 of Chicago. Back to pass. Looking into the end zone. <laughs> to Shea Winfrey on a 50-50 ball. Touchdown, Austin. That's the Austin we love and know. Fashion your seatbelts. Michelle Angel looking like the MVP that she was a year ago. Throwing it high. A jump ball. Winfrey comes down with it. And how about to Shea Winfrey? She was the starting quarterback here in Austin. They went out inside Michelle Angel. Instead of griping about that, she settled into being a role player and now having a big impact on the field as a wide receiver. Michelle Angel said she might become a go-to receiver for her. She catches everything she throws her way in practice, she told me. And that was a two-point attempt intended for Chastity Morales, no good. But Austin does regain the lead at 12 to eight. A scoring drive of four plays, 35 yards, taking up about 48 seconds. We always say great quarterbacks throw with their feet first. Early in the game, Michelle Angel's feet were all over the place. She was getting picked, thrown off balance. That series right there, everything on timing. Her feet were perfect, and it took him in the end zone. So now the Chicago offense taking over at its own 15-yard line with about 56 seconds remaining. They will have a timeout, but does Baker have the arm to get it down the field? First and 10 from the shotgun. Little dump off in the flat, that's Torrey Giles. And Giles smartly getting out of bounds after a nine yard reception. I like this Baker act in the game right now. They're moving the ball down there and it's not pretty. I mean, it's pretty ugly actually, but they're moving it. Short passes, bam, they're going. They're only going to give her about six yards, so it'll set up a second and three. 
The clock does stop with 50 seconds. They've got to be careful. They can't commit a turnover here. You haven't had the best half, and you're only down four seconds. I'd almost be content to take a knee here and get out of this half. You're absolutely right. If I'm Sid Lewis, I am thrilled to be down only four points to Austin. Second and three, Baker going to keep it herself. For a lanky quarterback, she's showing some toughness out there. I like the fire she has inside her right now. She's leading this football team exactly what they needed. They weren't moving the football. They couldn't even call a play. Navell Thompson helping out calling the plays, but they're doing it. 37 seconds remaining for this Chicago offense. They do have a timeout remaining. This is Baker back to pass a low snap. Now throwing it to the end zone. Caught! Caught and intercepted. How about the effort of Rachel Washington? Rachel Washington simply wanted the ball more than Ty Alley. Watch this pass. On the money, Ty Alley, great route. Inside stem, take it back outside. Over the shoulder, just catch the football. Rachel Washington steals it from her. What a play. A fucking safety. Force a fucking safety. Whatever the call is. You need one? Jim, Jim, Jim. That's head coach hey, Sidney hey, Lewis of Chicago. Rachel Washington just stealing six points from the Chicago Bliss right there. Baker with a perfect pass. They were inches, and I mean inches, from having a lead over the highly favored Austin team at halftime. Ty Alley just couldn't bring it down. Now, if you're struggling like you have been in Michelle Angel in this offense, do you just get out of the half? You got 26 seconds. You're deep on your side of the field. What do you do here? Give it to their Ferrari. You have to give it to her. That is Christel Harris. Getting to the outside. The Wichita, Kansas track star outrunning that Chicago defense. Big plays like that don't happen without great blocking. Number six, Jerrica Green with a great drive block on Hightower that opened the hole outside for the Ferrari, and she does the rest. How many times have we seen her do this? Wow. Christelle Harris, the GOAT, having one of her better halves of football over her nine-year career. 18 seconds remaining. Let's listen in to that Austin Navy, huddle. Navy, 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 Navy. Okay, now, she got her ass on you. Way out here, right? Hey, you, you know what? Fuck it. Marines, let's go with this motherfucker. Let's go on this side, though, okay? So we're going to go acoustic left. X short, crack. Queen, okay? Go get in the motherfucking right, zone. Now, get on the ball quick, because I might call another timeout. No, it's two. Come on. I was on the outside, and I saw her but, but still, we got our two coming off the offside like we got to. We get the fucking safety. Come on, now. Very upset his players for letting Harris get outside right there. On the other hand, it looks like Mike Oliveira is going to go back to the same play, his queen play and give the ball to the Ferrari again. We'll see. Chicago still going over that scheme. They can ill afford to give up another score here. They don't exactly have a scoring machine on that side of the ball. Great second quarter on both sides. Chicago showing some spark, but the Ferrari doing what she does. First and 10, ball at the 17. We've got another penalty. You whistled. Okay, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Michelle Angel endorsing the call. Illegal substitution. Too many men on the field, Chicago. That's a five-yard penalty. Still first down. The clock will start on the snap. More personnel problems on the Chicago side of the ball. They had eight defenders on the field. So now a second and five. Toss left. Christel Harris cutting back. Touchdown, Austin! The Ferrari doing it again, locking up everybody, including her own teammates right now. Taking them off the field. What a block by number five, Misty Gonzalez. Watch this block to put the Ferrari in the end zone. She sweeps out left, goes around the end, and then absolutely destroys Murdoch to lead the Ferrari in the end zone. That is a great block by Misty Gonzalez. And Christel to Ferrari Harris. Some bullshit. God damn. 
Christelle Harris now with 85 first half yards. Austin up 18 to eight. Now the extra point attempt. Bills can't handle that ball. So the score remains 18 to eight with Austin posting two scores inside of two minutes. And this scoring drive took up two plays, 27 yards, and only 15 seconds on the clock. Right, there, right on this play, they just tackled number motherfucking five. Coach, okay. first of all, yeah. first of all, it's, it's not a first of all. A first of all is that, listen, we just gave up a fucking touchdown because y'all not fucking got your ass open. What? The ball. Tackle the center? No! They tackled our player! You bl no, you blinding the motherfucker there! Sid Lewis complaining to the referees, saying the Austin players tackled, literally tackled his players to allow Howard to go in the end zone. But Ed, I don't know. I don't agree with that. That block by Misty Gonzalez is what keyed her to go in the end zone. 11 seconds remain now. We'll see if Chicago elects to get aggressive or just go into the locker room. That is Thompson in the backfield. The ball goes to Thompson, and Brittany Dowdy all over Thompson, capping an impressive half of football by the Dowdy sisters, Brittany and Courtney, officially taking us into halftime. Austin up, 18 to eight. Let's go down to the field with Heidi. Guys, I'm with Austin quarterback Michelle Angel. Michelle, is this a tougher start than you expected for your debut? Well, on the plus side, it can't get any worse. Um, so yeah, it's definitely difficult, but no excuses. This is on me. It's a team game and our defense has kept us in this, but um, you know, I, I need to, to get it together. So it's on me. Um, I just gotta get rolling and, and get it started. Christelle's been carrying us. She's been doing a great job blocking up front. So, um, you know, just gotta come out the second half and do what I'm supposed to do, do my job. It might have been a tough start for Michelle Angel here, but expect her to settle in in the second half. Back to you guys. That'll do it for us from Austin, Texas for the first half. It was a game of physicality up front and Chicago bending, but not breaking at times, keeping in this game until late. That is when the Ferrari, Christelle Harris took over and gave Austin an 18 to eight lead going into halftime. Back after this. You put ourselves in a fucked up situation. And that can't happen. All right? We got a couple bad breaks for these calls, but we can't let the field only down two fucking scores. Get your ass through the motherfucking gap. They doing the same shit that I seen on film, not okay. protecting the goddamn gaps. And we're not taking advantage of it on a consistent basis. And that can't happen. Because when it don't happen, it puts us in a fucked up position and everything that we worked and practiced on for the last couple of weeks is dead in the wash. I told you, this defense works only if everybody does their motherfucking job. And I said before the game, have a middle mindset, I'm going to do my motherfucking job every play. A far more competitive game than I think either of us expected as we welcome you back to LFL football night. The Austin Acoustic leading the Chicago Bliss 18-8. But I think when we look at this game from the booth in the first half, two points really stood out for me. One, the play of the Chicago Bliss. Folks, this is a team that's decimated without its starting quarterback, without its starting middle linebacker and heartbeat of that defense, Kristen Morrison. Despite all that, they're only down 10 points. And the Austin Acoustic, well, we talked about it. We hyped it a lot. The signing of Michelle Angel. But through one half of play, she's really struggled. I'm really surprised by both storylines. For Chicago, in their opener, they look like the bad news bears. They had no scheme offensively or defensively. Tonight on offense, still a little sketchy. The first quarter, they had four delay of game penalties. But that defense playing with a lot of fire. Hopefully, they, that can help turn this team around. Now, let's get back to the point I was making earlier, Michelle Angel. I, wanna, I don't want to harp on that too much, but I think it's an important one with the way the first half has played out. Michelle Angel, folks, was the 2018 league MVP, set all kinds of passing records, but coming into this new system, mind you, it is her first game in a new system, new offensive coordinator, but why do you think, again, she's struggling the way she is? I really think it's that point right there. We know she's a great quarterback, one of the most skilled players in the league. Her fundamentals better than any quarterback, but tonight really struggling, and I think it's because of that. Maybe some nerves her first game in Austin, but obviously she only threw for 24 yards in the first half and two interceptions. Now, let me ask you a question. What is the quarterback's best friend? The center. 
Okay, second best friend. <laughs> it's the running back, the running Christelle back, right. Harris. The Ferrari, her, in her ninth year, the legendary running back, often regarded as the goat at her position, is having one heck of a first half, 85 first half yards, and that partly has spelled out the success for Austin. She is simply the best the game has ever seen. The Ferrari came back from retirement. Everybody thought she was old, can't play anymore. She had 85 yards in the first half. Unbelievable. And I'm sure she really enjoyed the old reference coming from a 68-year-old Bobby Huco. Let's look at the first half scoring, folks. In the first quarter, it was Cassandra Bills, the speedster, running it in from eight yards out. That gave Austin an early 6 to nothing lead. The rest of the scoring all came in the second quarter. Chicago's Labrinthia Murdoch with a heads-up play, taking a live ball off the wall and returning it to the house. A 35-yard touchdown with the two-point conversion. Chicago actually led this one 8-6. to six. After struggling most of the half, Michelle Angel did throw a 12-yard touchdown pass to former Austin quarterback Tashe Winfrey. With 11 seconds remaining in the half, the Ferrari cranked it up with this 12-yard touchdown run. That brings us to our halftime score of 18 to eight as we look at the stats. What really screams out to me is the woeful Chicago run defense. Yeah, I understand they're up against the greatest running back in the LFL history, but giving up 118 yards on the ground is simply unacceptable. We will see if Chicago can regain the fire they had earlier in the game, or will Austin prove to be too much? Here we go. The second half is next. Back to LFL football night as we look at our first half impact players. Javelle Thompson for Chicago, only 11 yards in the first half, but the story of the night so far, Chris Dell, the Ferrari Harris, her first game with Austin, already 85 yards on the ground. That Austin defense will be on the field first. We'll see if it's Baker or Chaz Dusan that comes out at quarterback, although we did hear that Dusan sustained an injury, so it should be Baker the rest of the way. Baker's the spark. Got him back in the game. It's a shame Ty Alley couldn't haul in that long touchdown pass. She put it right on the mark, and Alley dropped it. So a first and 10 for this Chicago offense from the shotgun. Baker, again, good arm down the field. Just slightly off the mark, again intended for Ty Alley. He's slinging it. I like this. Sid Lewis calling the deep balls right now. She's got a, he's got a quarterback that can throw it deep. Ty Alley has the wheels. All she has to do now is get the ball under control and bring it in. How about the secondary for Austin? Between Rachel Washington, Cassandra Bills, and Marissa Goldston, they are having quite the night. Oh, they're loaded on defense. And then up front, you got the Dowdy sisters. You got Meg, Megan Hansen in the middle. It's a solid defense. We're just surprised how slow the Austin offense started. They picked it up late in the second quarter. We'll see how the second half goes. A second and 10 mishandled snap by Baker. And she pays the price as both of the Dowdy sisters bury Baker. Baker talking trash to the Dowdy sisters. Watch this. He mishandles the snap, tries to pick it up, but you can't outrun both Dowdy sisters, bringing her down. She starts talking trash to the Dowdy sisters. You can't do that. Now, I like the moxie, though. You don't want to seem defeated. You don't want to see over, seem overpowered. So that's the only thing I like from Baker's game right now. And her arms looked impressive at times. Right, but you t it's hard to reason with a Tiger when you got its head in its mouth, though. Third and 13. Ball at the Chicago 12. Baker taking another big hit from Brittany Dowdy, and you could see you talked about not poking the bear earlier in the game, and that's what Baker's doing. She's playing with fire when she's pushing those two Dowdy sisters. It was a loss of three yards of previous play. This two yards right here, the Dowdy sisters all over, and she's blowing kisses at them like she just had a 50-yard run. Fourth and 11. Chicago back to punt this, Emma Vander Hayden. Her first punt hit the scoreboard and netted about 12 yards. A high snap back to Vander Hayden. Good punt this time, kind of a low-lying drive punt. And that's fielded nicely. Chris Daniels breaking through arm tackles and nearing midfield. 
So great field position for Austin. Vander Heiden might be the LFL's leading punter. I only say that because I don't remember any team having an opponent twice in one oh, game so I guess, far. I, no, the, I like the logic there by the Chicago A coaching A staff. You can't turn the ball over on your side of the field when you're still in this ball game. They're in the ball game. I just don't like giving the ball away like that against a hot team. In the second quarter, Austin looked completely different than they did in the first. Angel looked sharp. The running backs are sharp. They're scoring points. And now they got the ball in their own 21-yard line. A first and 10 handoff. That's Christina Villalobos. Kind of a power back option for the Austin Acoustic. Villalobos gaining about five or six yards on that carry. Great one-on-one -on -one tackle by Organizac. She had a great first half. I talked to Michelle Angel at halftime, asked if any Chicago players were, she was impressed by, and she said number 20. She's all over the field. And now a second down play. Empty backfield from the shotgun. We've got a penalty. This could be a false start on Austin. False start. Number eight, Austin. Five yard penalty. Still second down. That's the backup wide receiver, Chastity Morales. And you're not seeing a lot of tempo, momentum on this offense. I realize it's their first game, kind of a preseason tune up, if you will, but it counts. You want to see a little better tempo at this point. Mike Olvera, the military guy, he's a perfectionist. He is not happy with this right now at all. Trust me. There's a second down play. A shot down the field intended for Tashe Winfrey. Not on the same page with Angel. Angel almost got the football there. Tried to hit Winfrey right behind Veronica Smith in the hole. Threw a BB there, just a little bit overthrown, but it would have been a big play. Winfrey does not have great feet, great hands. She's more like a big tight end, but she couldn't get to the ball. So that incomplete pass will set up a third and 16. They really do like Winfrey, kind of a Rob Gronkowski of the Patriots, a big target for Michelle Angel. Now a third and 16 from the 23. That's Harris in motion. Going to fake it to Harris. Now Angel keeping it herself. Chased down from the backside by Deanna Hightower. We've got yet another penalty on the field. Holding. Number six, Austin. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot. Still third down. That's a holding call on tight end Jerrica Green. Let's get another look at this. Keep your eye on the outside. That's Green holding Organiziak. That was a clear hold. Jerrica Green having a great night blocking until that play. Coach Oliveira cannot be happy with these penalties. In fact, he told me he wasn't going to totally open up his playbook tonight. He didn't want to show their next game against Seattle anything that they shouldn't see. But I know he did not expect this game to be this close. Austin now going backwards, literally, with a third and 26. How many plays do you have in the playbook for third and 26? You actually do with Michelle Angel. She can throw the ball to any part of the field, any zip code. So they have the play. Let's see if they throw it. A third and six. That's a five yard out into the flat. That's not going to get it done. Coach Oliveira cannot be happy with his offensive line tonight. On the run blocks, they've been great. Pass protection for Michelle Angel. She's getting killed tonight. She's getting pressure every time. Now you're backed up inside your own 13 yard line. A fourth and 26. You've got to look at possibly punting it here if you're Austin. The only reason he's probably not is because he's not scared of Chicago's offense at all, and he's got a quarterback with a gun and a receiver who can fly. They're going to take their shot well overthrown. That was intended to Cassandra Bills. Great coverage go, by the dude. Chicago secondary. Bills not on the same page with Michelle Angel. She ran Come a on, post dude. pattern. Angel threw the nine route, the oh, rail route right. outside, completely not on the same page. So the Chicago defense holds. Percent. And we'll take a media timeout on the field. The Chicago Bliss trying to inch their way back into this game. Back to LFL football night in Austin, Texas. Let's go down to the field with the Austin bench. If that's all I can do, and that's all we're going to do. And you blocked them to the fucking end zone. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right, let's go. Mike Oliveira not happy with his blocking up front at all. The running game looks okay, but like I said, Michelle Angel on passes is getting killed. First and 10, ball at the Austin 13. 
This is Baker remaining in the game, calling her own number. Really, that is the only play they have run, with the exception of the occasional handoff to Javille Thompson. The complexity of this is embarrassing. It really is embarrassing. This reminds me of some of the knockoff leagues around the world that try to copy the LFL, that don't have offensive teams. It's street football. Snap it to the quarterback and let her just try to run for yardage. It's no good. Second and 12, ball at the Austin 15-yard line. Baker remains in the shotgun. Thompson flanked to her right side. Going to go to Thompson. That's kind of what you call a medicine ball. If Thompson catches that, she probably ends up in the hospital. There's no read there. Again, it's like street football. She's not reading coverage. She said, OK, Javelle, you run a little swing pass. I don't care if you're covered or not. I'm going to throw it to you. And you know what? You're right. If she would have caught that ball, she gets killed. So now a third and 12. Despite all the comedy of errors offensively and at times defensively for Chicago, they're still in this game. It's a 10-point ball game. I feel bad for Baker. She has skills at quarterback, but no help from her coaches with an offensive system. Third and 12. That's a draw play to Thompson, and everybody's keying on her. Brittany Dowdy not fooled at all. I got to tell you, I don't think I've seen a more impressive outing by a pair of defensive ends that, like we've seen tonight from the Dowdy sisters. Javel Thompson, one of the great athletes in the league, can outrun a lot of defensive players, but not the Dowdy sisters. They smell blood in the water tonight all over Chicago. How about the job Courtney Dowdy did to seal the edge, forcing her back right into the waiting arms of Brittany Dowdy? Michael Oliveira's got to love having these two sisters as bookends on his defense. They're going to stop most running games in the league. It's going to be fun seeing when they play the big guys like Seattle, see how they do. Here comes that Austin crowd, fourth and 19. Baker back to pass. Nobody open. Got to take off herself, needs 22 yards. She'll gain about 12 of them, not enough, as Austin will take over on downs. Baker had all kinds of time back there, and she still has that cocky attitude. He didn't get the first down, but she's talking to the camera. She had time to throw the ball. To get that many yards, you have to throw the football. She had no shot at getting 19 running out of the pocket. Austin now taking over on downs. You kind of get the feeling that this is where Austin could blow this game wide open. I really get that feeling, especially the way Chris Dell, the Ferrari Harris, ran in the first half. Even Bills at wide receiver on those jet sweeps, their running game is right on tonight. Keep in mind, this offense has lost two big weapons in Leilani Lopez and Michelle Marshall. So they've got to really compensate for that somehow. This is Chris Dell Harris. That's one way to do it. Dragged down from behind, but not after a 10-yard carry by Harris. Chicago's coaches should watch offensive line coach Duncan McCallum's system for Austin. They're blowing away their offensive down, line. Bro. Hey, that's premature. That's head coach Sidney Lewis saying that was not a horse collar. Let's see if that's indeed the call by Jason Gardner and his crew. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, number two, Chicago. It's a 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. He needs to start overruling they silly ass, man. You did that too early. Out, but not them. So no, I think I kind of agree with head coach Sidney Lewis. That wasn't a traditional horse collar. But they're going to give it to Austin, so that'll set up. Now a first and 10 at the 20 of Chicago. Angel under pressure. I'm not sure if that's a lateral or a forward pass. Again, a lot of uncharacteristic decisions and playmaking by Michelle Angel. Again, Vanderheide with another outstanding play. All night long, we see number 20, just like Angel told us at halftime, came in and smashed her. And it made Angel look bad again. Not a good play. This defense, if there's one thing they're doing right, they're putting pressure on Michelle Angel and sending a blueprint for the rest of the league that the way you get after this offense is with four defenders up against three blockers. That's a toss left. Christel Harris finally tackled in the open field by Emma Vander Hayden. That is hard to do again. Number 20, Vander Hayden coming one-on-one -on -one against the Ferrari and bringing her down. Great tackle. 
Well, you're right. This defense is playing solid tonight. If Chicago had anything on offense, that would be a tight game. It'd be a very tight game. Yeah, I go back to that one interception by Rachel Washington late in the first half that could have brought this game to a two-point game. Late delay handoff. Christelle Harris bulldozing over defenders. A 12-yard carry by the Ferrari. I like the call by Mike Oliveira. It's quarterback, Angel not throwing the ball very well tonight at all. His running game's on, so just give the ball to the Ferrari. Now they're going to take Christelle Harris out on a fourth and four with less than 50 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Angel in the shotgun, empty back set. Dropping back to pass, pressure off the edge, stepping up. Caught, Cassandra Bills. Impressive route running by number three, Bills tonight. Great route by Bills. I love the way Angel climbed the ladder up in the pocket, got to where she could deliver a strike, moved out of the line's way. That's the old Michelle Angel right there. Setting up a first and goal for this Austin offense. We're nearing the 10 second mark, not sure they're gonna get this play off. No, here. This Chicago defense on its heels now, already down by 10. From the shotgun angel, they are not gonna get it off. In fact, they may be hit with a delay of game here. That's an interesting call, because that was the end of the quarter. Yeah, that's a correction on the call. No delay a game. So we're going to go into the fourth quarter with Austin really starting to assert itself up 18 to 8. When your number is called tonight, step up and make a name for yourself. Think about all the people who doubt you, who say you can't, and go prove them wrong. This is not about who left this team. It's not about who came back. It's about who's here right now. Now we have to play like we've never played before, ladies. This isn't just football. This is family, sisterhood. It's your life. It's how you live your life. Look to the girl next to you and fight for your life. Fight for the girl who's sitting next to you in this huddle right now. This is all meant to be. Every single one of you is here tonight because of a purpose. We can do this. I know we can. This is the last time I'm going to tell you that I'm going to let you down because I will not do it again. Let them understand that we are not here to play games with them. This is our game. Give it everything you have because all we got is 10 minutes. That's all we got. Back to LFL football night in Austin, Texas. Before we get underway, let's go down to the field with Heidi Golznig. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Austin head coach Michael Vera. Coach, with Michelle struggling, any thoughts of pulling her and putting into Shea Winfrey? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You know, we're, we're, we're struggling a little bit on the offensive side of the ball. It's definitely not acoustic football, but it's not panic time at all. She's a competitor. We'll be just fine. All right. It seems like it's still Michelle Angel's game. Back to you guys. It is definitely Michelle Angel's team. When she was signed by Michael Oliveira here in Austin as the number one free agent in LFL, she was given the car keys to this Mercedes Benz. It's her for the entire season. They're in it to win a championship, and any pull of her right now to put into Shea Winfrey would just be controversial and stir up the team. That's a first and goal handoff. How about the night Christelle the Ferrari Harris is having? Now heading out to midfield a la T.O. The Austin Acoustics starting to pull away in this one. Not a clean handoff. She cuts it outside. LaBrenthia Murdoch almost waves at her. It's like trying to tackle a tornado when you get one-on-one -on -one with the Ferrari Harris. What a night for her. Her first night in Austin. Incredible. Hey, no tornado jokes. We almost didn't make it into Austin because threat of tornado. It is no joke in this part of the country. You are 100% right, but when she runs, it is like a tornado coming at you. Here's the one-point attempt. That's Angel from the shotgun. It looked like it was set up for Bills, but they're going to go to Misty Gonzalez. So that'll be another point for the Austin Acoustic. 
They'll extend their lead to 25 to eight. Michelle Angel with very fast eyes, finding Gonzalez open in the corner. She was getting serious hit again by that Chicago front line, but she found Gonzalez for points. A six play, 40 yard drive, taking up two minutes and 57 seconds and giving Austin a 25 to eight lead. Austin really starting to gel on offense right now. We expected this in the first quarter, but then again, this is only their first game of the season. Right now, they're playing like a well-oiled machine. So Chicago's offense will take over. That's Baker staying in at quarterback. I don't know, I think Baker, considering she's only had literally one practice with the team, hasn't played that bad. I mean, they've obviously dumbed down the offense, but I'm not sure how sophisticated it was in the first place. No, you're right. She has a lot of talent at quarterback position. We knew what she did in Daytona Beach. She can play the game. She kind of reminds me of she's tall and lanky, can run, can throw like RG3. I'm kind of thinking Vince Young, personally. And you know what? She's got an arm. We saw her throw it down the field a couple times. Going back to that Rachel Washington interception, had Ty Alley brought that in, there would be a whole different temperament to this game. It'd be very close, but what she needs is a quarterback coach. He has the skills, now you have to refine them. They're gonna have to identify a franchise quarterback at some point. Obviously with Jane Caldwell gone, now it's gonna become kind of a musical chair between Tamika Robinson, Baker, and possibly Chaz Duzon if she's not seriously injured. This is Baker down the field. That was intended for Javille Thompson. Again, great coverage by that Austin secondary. DeVille Thompson looked like she gave up. If she would have ran through the football, that might have been a completion. Baker laid it out there. You're right, it looked like Thompson may have gotten behind Chris Daniels, the strong safety. And you can see Daniels there. And I don't like that. You've got to work in hand signals or something. You can't have your quarterback always go to the sideline for a play. The last time I can remember any league doing that was in the leather helmet days. That tells you how far behind the Chicago offensive team is compared to everybody else. This is Baker, empty back. And this is going to be yet another delay a game on Chicago. Delay a game. Delay a game, Chicago. Five yard penalty, still third down. That is a look of frustration on that Chicago sideline. Clearly a lot of work to do on this roster. A ton of work, especially the quarterback. And you really can't blame Baker, like you mentioned. She's only been here for one practice, doesn't know the system, probably doesn't even know how to see the time clock up there. And she ran out of time yeah. like there, but you can't blame her. She was thrown in the fire tonight. Third and 13, a little slingshot nearly intercepted off the deflection. That's Cassandra Bills just getting after it tonight. She's gutsy, she's a salty defensive back. I love her as a receiver, but as a defensive back, remember last year, she would lay people out. So here's another big call for Chicago. With 7.35 remaining, you're backed up inside your 12. You can elect a punt here. But it looks like they may go for it on a fourth and 13. Baker from the shotgun as this Austin crowd comes to life. Fourth and 13, dump off. That's Tory Giles. No shot. Here comes that swarming defense. A gain of three yards and a turnover on downs. There's no chance that we get the first down with that one yard pass to Giles. She had a shot to maybe get five. But they needed 13. There's no way you got to throw the ball down the field. And they've got Javelle Thompson. Just give it to her in open space, and she can get it for you. Let's go. Quick, quick, quick. So now Austin in a position to really blow out Chicago up 25 to 8 with great field position. That's Bills in motion at the top of the screen. A lot of blockers in front for Harris, but not able to break through. Only a carry hey, of three yards. Hey, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you this. You can see Christelle Harris still with a lot of friends on that Chicago roster. I got to ask you a question. At this point, obviously, it's very early in the 2019 season. But if you had to say it right now, who was the bigger free agent signing, Christelle the Ferrari Harris or Michelle Angel for Austin? 
Well, the biggest splash was getting Michelle Angel. She was the league MVP coming out as a free agent. I mean, who didn't want her? But with the Ferrari Harris, a lot of people thought her, she was going to go to Los Angeles. Los Angeles hadn't made a run at her, but I think she had some problem with the personnel out there, didn't get along with them. She said she really feels at home here in Austin. Harris has been an incredible compliment to this offense, at least in this first game. An offense that featured that young lady, Cassandra Bills, all of last year. And tonight, she's really picked up where she left off. Five rushes, 47 yards, a 9.4 average per carry. What a combination with her speed and then the power and speed with Harris. They're going to go far this year with this backfield. Third and one ball at the six-yard line. Here comes that rush by that Chicago defense. A deep drop by Angel, looking to the end zone, wide open. Touchdown to Shea Winfrey. The two finally connect. You mentioned she looks like Gronk and plays like Gronk. This looked like Brady to Gronk. Beautiful pass, beautiful route, catches the ball high at its high point. That looked like New England, but it's here in Austin. Look for that to happen a lot this season. Yeah, you mentioned it. Tashay Winfrey is not going to blow by anybody, but she's a great possession receiver, especially in the red zone with that height and her background in basketball. Again, a perfect pass receiving tight end. Austin now lining up for the one point conversion, a jet sweep. That's Chastity Morales. Morales getting into the end zone, a little bit of theatrics, and Austin extends its lead to 32 to eight. Wow, is Morales gonna run up in the stands? You think she might've won the Legends Cup or something? She scored the extra point, correct? She just scored the extra point, but she did cap a three play 15 yard drive that took up a minute one, and more importantly, I think sealed the final nail in the coffin for Chicago. You gotta love that enthusiasm on Morales. That might be that culture we're talking about here in Austin. That's why the Ferrari Harris came here. In LA, there's a lot of problems off the field. People thought she was gonna sign there. She wanted to come to a home, and Oliveira right now has this team playing together on and off the field. Yeah, they have a really family unit here in Austin. It's been the case for a number of years, and it's now attracting big name free agents. First and 10 from the 15. This is Baker. Kind of an unorganized handoff to Javel Thompson. But there is Thompson breaking out in the open and kind of hits her head against the ground, but now getting up. Thompson, the only bright light on this offense and really on this team at this point. Five minutes left in the game, and they break out a jet sweep like that. We haven't seen that the entire game. It gives her space. You want Thompson in space to do just what she did right there. They should have used that in the first quarter. That was an 11-yard carry by Thompson. You can see Baker still looking back to Thompson to really call the play in the huddle. I don't think you can stress the point enough. She's only had one practice with this offense. Obviously, it's going to get better. Again, a lot of confusion with the handoff, but she's an athlete. Baker able to salvage two yards. That's Marissa Goldston on the tackle. She's an athlete. She played in Daytona, but she never played in a situation like this. And this big crowd here in Austin, with one practice, I mean, you got to think about that a little bit. She was thrown in the fire, and she's playing okay. Put it this way, I went through four years of practices in high school football, and I couldn't manage to break the starting lineup. I remember that at Centerville High School. You were number four, fourth string going into your senior year. How'd that end up? Not so well, Bob Huco. Second and eight ball at the 22 of Austin. Baker remains in the shotgun, not expecting that ball. And now able to just get on top of it. It'll be a big loss for the Austin offense. Baker needs to get her composure back right now. Hand the ball off to Thompson, throw some short passes, try to get him in the end zone before the end of the game. Get some momentum going for the rest of your career this year. Now Baker's out of the game. That's Emma Vander Hayden. It looked like Baker may have taken a shot at the end of that play when she recovered the fumble. Vander Hayden now handing off on a jet sweep. Javel Thompson. Look at Thompson's speed. That was a 12-yard carry setting up a fourth and six. That's twice now on the jet sweep. Hightower and Giles do a great job of sealing the ends, giving some room. 
for Javel Thompson to get around the corner. I mean, why didn't they use this in the first half? It looks good. Thompson continuing to be a leader in that huddle. When you think of the offseason and all the turmoil, all the change for Javel Thompson, Tamika Robinson, and Kristen Morrison to stay with this team, I think that speaks a lot to their character because they knew the mess they're going to be inheriting this season, that they would have to be the leaders and step into that role. And they are. Just a shame that Kristen Morrison is out for the season with the injury. Here again, Thompson's got to step up and be the leader for the team. On a fourth down, Emma Vander Hayden going backwards. Although we've got a flag Personal here. Foul, face mask, number 19, Austin. 10 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. They're going to call a face mask on Brittany Dowdy. Let's take a look. There it is, queued up. I'm not sure I see a face mask. It looked like they just took each other down, but Chicago will get a first down. This is unbelievable. Vander Heide is now the quarterback. This is the fourth quarterback we've seen in two weeks for Chicago. I would argue that we haven't seen any quarterbacks for Chicago, but Baker is back in the game on a first Direction. and goal ball at the Austin the 10. And at this point, the previous spot. First and 10, Chicago from the 10 yard line. First and goal. You're not fighting to get back in this game like you were making a point earlier. You're looking to just pick up some momentum going into the third game of the season for Chicago. First and goal. Baker back to pass across the middle. Nearly intercepted. Chris Daniels had an absolute gift from Baker and just dropped it. Baker was way late on the throw. In fact, if she would have thrown it earlier, it would have been a touchdown. She got all jumpy, threw it late, which she shouldn't have done, and that should have been picked. Chris Daniels, the safety for Austin, not impressed with her effort as we're going to take a timeout down on the field. Christelle Harris and the Austin Acoustic up 32 to 8. Back to LFL football night in next week. We are in the Pacific Northwest as the Seattle Mist hosts the Omaha Heart. Back here in Austin, we've got our game MVP. And that's none other than Christelle the Ferrari Harris. Wow, just an incredible night for the Ferrari tonight. Her first game of the year, she had 115 yards on only 11 carries. She remains the gold standard of LFL running back. That's Harris embracing her mom. Mama, I love you. Oh, I love mama. you. Good job. I'm nothing without you, mama. I know. I love you so much. What a touching moment. And now it's going a different direction. <laughs> Mom's a great mom, just not a great beer drinker. What a night for Christelle Harris. Wow, I went in from tears to laughter in about two seconds. <laughs> We've got beer on the camera lens. We've got a game MVP. You got to figure the party is just now starting on 6th Street in Austin. Watch out, LFL. The Ferrari is back. Meanwhile, down on the field, we still got some football left to play. I'm proud of you. That went hell of a job. You know what I'm saying? You're unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's head coach Mike Oliveira. He knows what he has in number 13. Number 13 will keep his job going for a long time. Second and goal, ball at the 10. Baker remains in the shotgun. They were going to set up another jet sweep to Javille Thompson. Now Baker snapped like a twig by Brittany Dowdy. I'm telling you what, we got all over Austin tonight a little bit offensively. Defensively, they are sound all across the board. And you know Michelle Angel, she's going to come around. The offensive line's good. The receivers are good. Watch out for Austin. Yeah, I really liked, like I said earlier in the first half, the effort by the secondary of Austin. Outside of the dropped interception by Chris Daniels, the way Marissa Goldston has played, Cassandra Bills, and Rachel Washington, I don't think I've seen better secondary play in quite some time. Absolutely. He's got a great coaching staff. He has Cole Berry, just a young kid, but he's like the Sean McVay of the defensive world of the LFL. Third and goal, a low snap back to Baker, evading the rush, and now just throwing it into the end zone. No shot. 
And right on cue, that Austin secondary with Marissa Goldston setting up a fourth and goal. Goldston and Cassandra Bills at safety, they're quite a combination back there. I'm telling you, it's a fun team to watch. Yeah, I think you hit it on the head earlier. They're going to go as far as their offense can get them. The defense is sound, but can Michelle Angel come around to her performance in 2018? I think she will, and what she told us is that because they have the Ferrari now, even when she plays a bad game like tonight, they can win because of the Ferrari. This is Baker on a fourth and goal, throwing off her backside. Nearly sacked. And there's the moxie on number one, despite the scoreboard. Baker's not going to back down from anybody. He might be one of the top trash talkers I've seen come into this league. I like it. Good attitude. Now, this is a bit surprising. This game is well in hand. Why are you keeping Michelle Angel and Chris Del Harris still in this ball game? Great question. The last thing you want now is somebody to get nicked up and miss some time. Right now, Angel, you know who she is. You know who Ferrari is. Get some rookies in there right now. Austin taking over with one minute remaining. And if you're not familiar with the LFL playoff picture, point differential does factor in. That's why teams usually do not take a knee and try to get more points. Inside handoff, that's Christelle Harris. A shoelace tackle away from another score. Wow, that might have set the LFL rushing record if she could have broke that last tackle. Unbelievable. Now get her out of the game. An 18-yard carry by Harris. And now Austin in a hurry-up offense with under a minute remaining. Here comes the rush on Angel, gets it off. The receiver was not open. Morales not able to get any separation. She's an interesting story. Took a year off, came back, now in a backup role. They're looking for her to develop in that wide receiver position. Right, as a possession receiver, they got Bills going deep, and she's good coming across. That will develop. And you got Winfrey now. That's quite a combination of receivers you have. Second and 10, ball at the Chicago 21. Here comes that rush again. Stepping up in the pocket, Angel finds a receiver. And that's Morales. She wasn't down. What is Morales doing right now? That's probably why she wasn't in the game earlier. <laughs> <laughs> she had no idea that she could have got up. She wasn't touched. She could have stole advance. She can catch, though. She doesn't know the rules, but she can definitely catch the football. You can see she's saying, that was my bad. Very lucky that didn't turn into a turnover. Now 40.7 seconds remaining, a first and 10. Angel back to pass again, stepping up in the pocket and eating dirt. Chicago is bringing four defenders every play to get after Angel. You know, I really like Mike Oliveira as a head coach, but why do you have your star quarterback, number one free agent, taking shots like that when the game's over? Huh? That was me. Don't even worry about it. I want y'all to try to kill one of these motherfuckers. Is they still trying to fucking score? What I'm gonna, what I want to do, here's what we're gonna do. I want to run spread right, normal split, okay? I want to go F coin. I will get her out real quick. You step back, and then you go vertical. And throw right. In the spread right. Yeah. I want to go F coin. So she's going to go quick lateral motion towards the Z and let her set real quick. So it should like it should look like okay. twin stack. Oliveira wanted to go the horn play. He wants more points. This game is over, and you saw the defensive team for Chicago talking to Sid Lewis. He wants to hurt people right now. This game is not over. Second and 16, 22.5 seconds remaining. Chicago looking to get after Michelle Angel from the shotgun. Here comes the corner blitz to the end zone and overshooting her target. Does anyone want to protect me? Anyone? Michelle Angel asking if anybody wishes to protect her right now. That's Angel's fault right there. That was a corner blitz. She's supposed to read that. She doesn't have enough, enough people to protect her. You got to get rid of the football quick or audibleize off. But the real one that should protect her is Mike Oliveira, the head coach. Get her out of the game. Third and 16, rolling right, throwing across her body and taking another hit. 
These hits are going to add up. She's not the biggest quarterback in the league. I don't get it. The last thing you want to do is lose your quarterback right now, first game of the season. She's taking shot after shot after shot here, and the game is over. This Austin offense staying aggressive. Now a fourth and 16, the final play of the game. Obviously, they've got to go to the end zone here if they want to get more points. From the shotgun, looking to the right side, wide open. Chastity Morales making up for that boneheaded play earlier as Austin scores on the final play of the game. Chastity Morales, she wants more touches. Look at this, she gets wide open. He didn't know what she was doing the last time when not running into the end zone. Great throw by Michelle Angel, wide open, takes it in the end zone. She's gonna get some more playing time this year. A comeback game for Chastity Morales. And the Austin Acoustic, looking like the dominant team we expected them, at least offensively. And that's Chastity Morales. Is she vying for a starting spot, possibly? Absolutely. I'll tell you what, this is probably the reason why Coach Oliveira left Angel in the game. To get momentum, score ended the game, leave tonight with momentum for next week. That's Cassandra Bills. On that jet sweep, has anybody had more success in the league on the jet sweep other than maybe Dominique Malloy of Seattle? But Cassandra Bills has really done a job tonight. Or they're both the same model, just speed demons. They can fly by anybody. One on one, they get around the corner. It's fun to watch her run the football. Looks like we've got a penalty on the extra point. So they're going to play an untimed down for the extra point conversion. You could see Sidney Lewis and that Chicago team just want to go home, get on a plane to O'Hare, and rebuild for that third game. The one positive tonight for Chicago is that defense. They play with a lot of fire. Here's the end, they're still hitting Angel. If the offense can get a little bit going, they can win some games this year. So here comes the one point attempt from about the nine or eight yard line, rolling right, looking to the end zone, lofting it up for Tashay Winfrey. Winfrey dropping an absolute dime for Michelle Angel. So that'll be the final play of the game. That is the end of the game. Good first game for Austin. They got what they came for, the win. Let's go down to the field with Heidi. Thanks, guys. I'm with longtime Chicago Bliss running back, Christelle Harris. Christelle, you came to life tonight and shared an extra special moment with your mom. Does this victory become that much sweeter that it's against your former team? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm just so happy to be able to play. This is my 10th season, and my mom is in the building. Texas is like a home game to me because I'm from Kansas, but I live in Chicago. So to be here, I got like 20 people over there and they all got my shirts on. I'm just so happy and so excited. And this is a great team. This is probably the funnest program I played in, in a long time. And I'm just happy. And my mom being here is just the icing on the cake. Guys, Austin Acoustic is now 1-0, but age is just a number as Christelle Harris is running like a rookie. Back to you guys. Running, but I'm wow, does that right? say a lot? Christelle the Ferrari Harris saying this team is more of a team than any team she's been with. That means Chicago. Yeah, the culture in Austin has officially won over, and this franchise has arrived. After a very slow start to this game, they route Chicago 38 to nine, behind impressive play by Christelle Harris and Cassandra Bills, and a defense that's really coming on for Bobby Huco. Our sideline reporter, Heidi Golsnick. This is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week on LFL Football Night.